good evening, everyone. Uh, God bless you. It is so uh, such a blessing really to to sit here and uh, be able to share with you. Um, uh, you can put your comments in the um, in the comment area. I really would like to have your feedback and and really hear really just how this is blessing you or really good questions that you may have or comments you want to make. You know, or really just uh, give me some feedback to it. I pray that that it is a blessing to you. And we were going to uh, be going in First Kings, going First Kings again, uh, chapter 18. Um, I pray that God really is blessing you where you are. I know they're having a lot of floods and a lot of disappointment going on down in uh, in the Gulf there. And I want to pray pray for the people there uh, while we're here. Uh, I really thank God really that I'm able really to use this as a vehicle and an instrument. That actually they can help bless people, to pray for people, uh, that actually go all the way across the nation. And Father, right now I just thank you, Lord God, really for for each and every person, oh God, that looks to hear this voice on the sound of my voice, because there is no distance, oh God, in the spirit. And Father, I thank you, oh God, Lord, how you are covering your people, Lord God. Lord, I thank you how you're being there for those in distress, oh God. Really may have lost loved ones, Lord. You give them comfort and peace, Lord. But Father, I thank you, God, regardless of the loss of material things, oh God, Lord, just know that, that Lord, that they still have you in their presence, Lord. But Father, I thank you, those, oh God, really, that have that have been blessed, really, to hear your word, oh God, really, to be strong and be, be courageous, oh God, in this time, Lord. Knowing that, God, it is a new beginning, it's a new rejoicing, oh God. God, that God, that you have not really uh, just looked to abandon them, Lord God, but you are very present help in a time of trouble. Father, we thank you for tonight, oh God, your word, oh God. Just as the things that are going on here in this chapter 18, oh God, as, as Elijah looked to confront uh, King Ahab, Lord, Father, I thank you, oh God, that we look to confront the things which have seemed to loom large in our life, oh God, that seem to be overpowering in us, oh God. But I thank you, God, that you have made us for the conquest. And we thank you for the blessing of your word by your spirit tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, <laughs> this has really been a little bit of a challenge for me tonight because actually um, I've had to really to, um, uh, I would say, reconstruct uh, uh, this whole message tonight uh, and had to bring it up. Uh, on time, uh, really trying to keep it inside a time frame, but I thank God really just how that we are going to uh, uh, press on in this tonight, uh, and in this uh, at this time, Lord, of what was going on uh, and struggling in making this presentation, but only do it by God's Spirit, and that's what I, that's the first thing I know that is only by the Spirit of the Lord that I'm able to do the things that He's calling me to do here. So now let's take a look at this, and we're going to uh, get a little adjustment here. Okay, now let's go here. Let's look at, uh, let's do a little review here. Let's let's go back to John here, and just take a and let's take a look at this here. This is John chapter eleven. Uh, this is about Lazarus, and you no, know, but some of the things that he said of what Jesus said. Uh, at that that time, he was a little bit emotional, and he said, he said, so, uh, verse 41, he says, uh, so they removed the stone, because he asked him to remove the stone, and Jesus looked upward and said, Father, I thank you that, uh, for hearing me. Now, and he said in 42, he says, I know that you always hear me, but I have said this for, for the sake of the crowd standing here, so that they may believe that you sent me. Jesus did not have to really to pray about what he was going to do, but he did pray about knowing that the Lord, that for his father always hears him. But he's only doing this because of those that were there that he was looking to pray. Because they had a challenge of believing. They wasn't sure. Mary and Martha wasn't sure. Um, just like Thomas, I think I think it was Thomas, uh, one of the one of the twins, told other disciples. He says, "Okay, look, okay, we're going we're going back to we're going back to Bethany, or to the area where they actually they were going to kill him before." Uh, and he said, "You going back there?" And he said, "Yeah, I'm going. We're going back. We got to go back." He said, "Is there not twelve hours in the day?" You know, and that and uh, but all that was being said. And he said, look, he said, look, okay, when Jesus was saying, look, it's time to go, 
he said, okay, let's just go and die with it. <laughs> he was expecting to die. That's, that's the thing about it. He was expecting to die. He said, let us go and die with it. You know, so because why? Because we are a part of him. So where he's going, we're going to go. If it's going to cost us our life, we're going to go. But we know that wasn't Jesus' uh, assignment really to go and die except at the cross. So here he is and knowing that, okay, Lord and Father, I know you always hear me. In 43, in 43 and 44, he says, after saying this, he shouted with a loud voice to call Lazarus. Now, he wasn't calling Lazarus the physical body of Lazarus. He was calling the spirit, the spirit of his own, his own spirit that's in Lazarus to come forth. Because the spirit quickened and give life. That's what he says. That's what it says in Ephesians. In, in, in Ephesians, it says how that the, the spirit that quickened the dead. He says, while you were yet dead, he quickened you so that you will come to life. So now he's doing the very same thing with Lazarus. He's bringing Lazarus to life spiritually, but the physical body is going to raise up too. That's the power of God or what he does, that he call you by your spirit, by your spirit, man. But to, he said, because of these are standing here, I'm going to say this this way. Lazarus come forth because he hadn't called it by his name because all the spirits may have come up out, out of there if he just said come forth everybody who was who who loved the Lord and may have died they may have came forth then so he had to say Lazarus come forth and he shouted it 44 says and the man who who had died came out his hands and feet tied and with strips of cloth and his face was wrapped with a handkerchief and Jesus told them untie him and let him go. Now, when you tie your tie person's hands and you tie their feet, they are bound. Jesus has come to set the captives free. When you're bound hand and foot and you got something across your eyes you can't see, you can't use your hands, you cannot walk, and you cannot walk in the Lord in that, in that state. Because when the Lord brings you out of anything, he's going to use you as to be a blessing to others. So now you have to come out and look to let your hands, your hands have to be released, your foot, your feet have to be released so you can walk in the things of God, so that you can put your hands to be a blessing for the Lord as well, to glorify his name, as well as you have to be able to see physically, really just the direction where you're going, although you're being guided by the Spirit, by the hearing in your ear. Amen? Okay, now let's go to, let's go to 1 Kings First Kings chapter 18. And we'll see somewhat of the very same thing of what was here and happened in the New Testament. Let's look at it from the Old Testament with Elijah confronting Ahab. And we're starting in verse 1, 1 Kings chapter 1. And it says, quite some time later, this was three years later, it says, this message from the Lord came to Elijah, go visit Ahab. I'm sending some rain to the surface of the ground. Okay, now we know that in uh, uh, Genesis chapter 2, God called a mist to come up out of the ground and actually end up branching out into four rivers, leaving, leaving Eden. Okay, but the place here says, I'm putting rain on the ground. I'm bringing rain on the ground. In that chapter of Genesis chapter 2, it said that there was no rain on the earth yet. In the time of Noah, no rain had hit the earth. But here, it had been raining after Noah. We know that the flood caused the land really to be pure, to be cleansed of all the all the wickedness and everything. And God started over with Noah to bring to bring forth uh, really the righteous people that He's supposed to be bringing forth. Although it still did get polluted because mankind has a beast-like nature that when you don't look to follow, don't look to follow the Lord. Because if you go by your own nature, it has a beast-like nature. But here, they won't have time to get into all that. We can talk about that a little bit later. But here, how it says that, he said, so uh, verse 2 says, Elijah went to show himself to Ahab right when the famine in, in Samaria was severe. And it's called Samaria because at some point in time, Israel lost its name, its nation, and everything. And really, it was in Samaria. And King Ahab was there. 
Now, when things are of crisis uh, in your life, you got to understand God is a very present help in a time of trouble. I cannot say that enough. Yes, in our mind, we kind of get combobulated and really confused at times, but we got to hold on to our faith. Faith is what we got to hold on to. Faith is what we have. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen, but it's there. When we're trusting in the Lord, when we put ourselves in a place where you hear the voice of God, just like Elijah, uh, another scripture that comes up was one actually that this, of, in James chapter 5. It says that it's that Elijah was a man, natural man just like us, but he prayed earnestly for the rain, natural rain three, three years. Okay, that's what it says in the New Testament because they realized it was three years. But in the very beginning in chapter 1 of Gen, I mean chapter 1, chapter 17 of Genesis, verse 1, it, told, it said that actually that he said that actually it's not going to rain for several years. He didn't know how long it was going to rain. All he knew that God had told him it was not going to rain. That's in chapter 17. In chapter 18 here, three years went by. And then it's time... This time, at this time, there's a famine going on. It's severe at this time. There is Samaria, okay, and Ahab had told uh, um, uh, Obadiah. Obadiah was a righteous man, and we're going to talk about that place of righteousness here. And one of the great things about this is that Obadiah really hid a hundred prophets from Jezebel. Jezebel was killing the prophets, and Ahab was putting the people in slavery, was putting the Israelites in slavery. So here's two sides. Kill the people who actually can prophesy and prophetically speak into the, into the nation to give it direction and give it wisdom, the wisdom of God, understanding of God, and the other person that they, they're married to them. Okay, what are they doing? They are putting people in bondage, binding their hands, putting a handkerchief on it, on it, face so they can't see God, and we're going to get, to get to see this, and also tying their feet so they can't walk in the things of God. Because if you can't, if you don't have a prophet, how can they, how can they really hear the voice of God at this time? The prophets were supposed to be speaking speaking to the people at that time. That's what the people were supposed to be listening to, listening to, the people of Israel. Now, let's go down here to verse 17 and 18 of first kings when they have saw elijah okay because he had actually uh obadiah was told to go and try to find some water place where they can send the cattle and and the sheep and all of them and mules and everything and he said okay and he's and he pretty much he was looking to go out there and he ran across elijah and elijah said look go tell your king i'm i'm here go tell him i'm here Obadiah was a little fearful about that, said, God's going to send you someplace and actually not going to show up and everything. But he said, no. He said, look, when Ahab, said, when Ahab saw Elijah, because actually Elijah said, I'm going to see him. I'm coming. I'm, I'm here to confront him. There's time where that we got to learn how to confront things that seem to be bigger than us. Elijah was a nobody. In chapter one of, uh, I mean, chapter, chapter, keep saying chapter one. It's in Kings, in Kings chapter, first Kings chapter seventeen. Um, Elijah, Elijah came on the scene. He was a stranger. He was an alien uh, there in Gilead himself. The Bible said he was a stranger, an alien to the people that actually where, where he was living at. They were, they didn't know him. But the place of when the A he came onto the scene, all of a sudden now he's told to go to the king and tell him, say, look, you're going to you're not going to see rain until I say so. He just shows up. And he made a name for himself, but he won't try to make a name for himself. He was there really to deliver the people of Israel. And Ahab, when Ahab saw, this is seven, well, verse 17 of chapter 18, when Ahab saw Elijah, Ahab asked him, is it really you, you destroyer of Israel? And Elijah replied, I'm not the destroyer of Israel, but you and your ancestors' household have been doing that because you have abandoned the Lord's commands. That's, that's the key there. Abandon the Lord's commands. Why? Because God was the one who was king over Israel. 
but you you abandoned the Lord's commands, uh, the, the Lord's commandments, and have followed the Baals. And there, Baal mean Baal mean Baal was a a Phoenician deity. Okay, uh, but Baal Baal is Baal is a de deity, but then in, in the plural is Balaam, and that's one of the things about what it, uh, when it said Baals, it actually is Balaam. Of course, it's more than one god they look to serve. Now we know God is God is one, but He's three people. Okay, but the thing is though that they're one. You got God the Father, you got God the Son, which they actually he looked to only hear the voice of God, only look to do what he sees his father do too as well. Okay, the Holy Spirit is only there to speak to us on the Christ's behalf because he's only going to tell us the word which that the Christ tells him to say. He's not going to speak anything of his own. He doesn't have his own opinion. And if we have, if we have the if we have the Spirit of Christ, guess what? We're going to hear the voice of the Lord. But are we hearing many voices? Are we are we listening? Are we focusing on really hearing the voice of the Lord? It's only going to speak by his word, by his commandments. That's the key. So that means that we have to be reading his word. And all you really do hear his commandments. Okay? Now, and I know you're doing that, but it's not a time to be fearful. Now, let's look at something about those um uh, those ancestors that we're talking about that happened back in first kings uh chapter chapter 12 and let's look let's kind of look at that chapter 12 of first kings verse 28 so the king sought some advice and then built two golden calves and uh, and announced uh it too difficult for you to go to Jerusalem, okay? So here's your gods, Israel, uh, you brought, who, who brought you up from the land of Egypt. Now, remember hearing that before? Aaron made a golden calf. And they said, this is the God that brought us up out of, out of the land of Egypt, out of bondage. No, you only making a god actually that they actually uh, uh that actually that they put you in bondage. They had you worshiping worshiping the worshiping the wrong thing. And Jesus, I mean I keep saying Jesus, not Jesus, but Moses was told by God, go tell Pharaoh to let his people go. Let them go on a three-day journey. That was a place of jurisdiction where they, it pushed them out of the Pharaoh's command out of his jurisdiction where he had no control over them. But he wouldn't let them go until, of course, you know, they actually did the killing of the firstborn. Now here's now here's something. God bless you, Cielo. God, good to see you here, uh, see you there. I uh, hope everything is going well. Keep I'm still praying for 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 that uh for, for that gentleman of your household. One of the keys about this is that the same thing Elijah is doing, I mean, uh, Ahab is doing here, and Elijah is looking to deliver them from. And that is from the place of being in bondage. Jesus says, you're not in the world just like I'm not in the world. I'm separating you from the world. And he said, I'm praying that you be protected from the evil, that it's not really evil one, but from the evil that's in the world. And here, Ahab, I mean, not Ahab, or actually, this is King Jeroboam here in chapter 12, that actually they had said, okay, look, I'm not going to let you go down to Jerusalem. I'm not going to let you go there because actually if you go there, you know, hey, look, you may rare bomb and really might, you might sort of change your mind and really uh, get into worship of the Lord. So I'm going to close you off. This is the guy, this is the guy here that delivered you. This is the guy, hey, this, this guy here is what's delivering you. But they were already in bondage. <laughs> There's something else to know that when people think that they're being taken out of bondage, but actually being kept in bondage. I don't know how that feels. When people try to manipulate you, tell you, oh man, you ain't got to do that. You ain't got to do that. You already, right. come on, come on with me. Come on with me. Don't do it. Trust the Lord. 
Trust the Lord. That's what I'm telling you. Trust the Lord. It'll save you and free you from a whole lot of places of bondage following man and not God. Let's look. Let's just look at something here. Let's go to uh, Proverbs chapter 11, uh, verse 19 and 20. This is Proverbs chapter 11, verse 19 and 20. And look at what it says here. This is chapter 11, verse 19. Genuine righteousness leads to life. But whoever pursues evil will die. If you're following the wrong path of those that are evil, they lead you to destruction. Verse 20 says, devious minds are abhorred to the, are abhorred to the Lord. But those whose ways are innocent are his delight. And he will always direct their path. It's the very what it says here about are his delight is the very same thing which that the father said about his son at the time of his baptism. This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. He is my delight. And if we are looking to follow the, the, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we're in the Father's delight. Because we're looking to pursue righteousness and do what God really wants us to do and to glorify his name. Amen. Okay, let's get back to uh let's get back to Kings. First Kings chapter 18, we're going in here now to verse uh 19 and 20. We're just about we're just about finished up with this here. First Kings chapter 18, verses 19 and 20. And let's look at what it says here. So gather all Israel uh, to meet me on Mount Carmel. This is uh, what Elijah told them. Bring, bring along the 450 prophets of Baal and the 400 prophets of the Asherah who are funded at <laughs> Jezebel's uh, expense. So now that's 850 false prophets. 850 false, false prophets, and to gather Israel there too as well. Because now it's time to make a decision. Verse 18, and Ahab sent, he sent, he sent for the Israel, the Israelites, the Israelis, and brought, he, he brought the prophets together at Mount Carmel. Now, Mount Carmel is, is a place, it's like a plateau, but it's a brick, it's a wide, broad area there. It's around mountain, a mountain ranges there and everything. And the people was all on the mountain ranges as well as on the as well as on the plateau. And it's a lot, it's a huge area. Are you talking about bringing all Israel there? And the key is, is that now it's time to look to confront the things in which that are holding them bondage. But then to see what the Lord's answer is in spite of what King Ahab is showing them by 850 prophets. Verse 21. It's the last, it's the last scripture here. It says, now, where Elijah, it says, where Elijah approached, because actually he was bringing it, I mean, Ahab brought all the people and the prophets to where Elijah was. And Eli where Elijah approached all the people and asked them a question. How long will you keep hesitating between both sides? If the Lord is God, go after him. Pursue him. Pursue righteousness. Pursue the place where the actually is going to bring blessings in your life. It's going to bring deliverance. It's going to bring healing. It's going to bring prosperity, health, wholeness, clear mind, not having to look over your shoulder, not to be in fear of man, but knowing to fear to fear the Lord. But the people didn't answer. A word because he said, if Baal is God, serve him. 
If God is God, serve God. And a lot of times in our in, in today's time where we are, we are put in the place of what to what decisions we should make. People who love the Lord. The pandemic is here. But are we supposed to be in fear of the pandemic? Should we be in fear of possible things which they're struggling with? Of people how we might, might not have enough income? Of course, if we trust in the Lord, things are going to be okay. There is a lot of a hey, God has his people out here and have compassion where that actually there's a lot of there's a lot of food line uh, f- food. Uh, banks and things that are there to feed the people. And unfortunately, I mean, this is just like how Elijah had to go through. They was given ravens food. Do, do, am, am, I, am I trying to be, be hard? No. But God does provide for his people. We're living, we're living on seeing citizens income. <laughs> and, but our household is blessed. And I can only thank God for that. Any addition which that we receive, we thank God for it. But we still look to glorify Him. We look to still to give Him thanks for all that He has done. We didn't do it ourselves. So it now it's a place of what opinion are we going to follow? Are we going to follow the opinion in our time, in our day and time, March 2021, are we only just going to listen to man? Or are we going to look into follow the Lord our God? In spite of what they say, look, you can't assemble together. Be careful how you gather together. I'm not talking about not to get vaccine. I mean, if you feel the need to get vaccine, get vaccine. I thank God that I actually I've been he- I've been healed of of COVID myself. Spent two and a half two and a half weeks. In, 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 in the hospital. Blood clot on the lung. Two, going, just starting to go on three months, uh, close to three months now, really to be out of be out of the hospital. And I thank God for only only the Lord delivered me that way. While I was in there, I went from one day to being down and my 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 breath, uh my breath was not that was not that long enough that I could be released. To really to where I, my breath would be released, and when I got out two days later, after I got, a day actually a day later after I got out, I was talking my head off, no coughing, no nothing. But when I settled down, I had to put the oxygen on, and now I have a little small cough. But guess what? The Lord is good, and His mercy endures forever. But I thank God for all the health and strength that I have. So, trust in the Lord. In all your might, with all your heart, with all your strength, and with all your mind, all of your mind. This is what we have to do at this time. Why? Because this is what the Lord wants. This is the time where that we got to have to trust Him. Even even in the time of these crises, we got to trust Him even more. This is what the Lord really wants us to. to this is what He really wants us to have. This is what He really wants us to do. You know, I, I thank God really to be able to, 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 to come and try to be an encouragement because actually we need a lot of encouragement in the body of Christ. Why? Because that we are the ones to be a light in a dark place. And there are a lot of darkness that's going on out here with the racism, the injustice that's going on, with a lot of people really are, are panicking or really and upset and not really having peace at this time. We can give them peace. We can give them understanding. And show them really just what the Lord what the Lord really wants them to have. When we look to follow the Lord in the power of his might. And to be assured, knowing that actually we're standing in the Lord, whether we're doing all that we can to be in his presence. From eternity past to eternity present to eternity future. Just walking in eternity. Because we are seated with him in heavenly places. But he has quickened us. He's, he he brought us out of darkness and put us in this marvelous light. Father, right now, I just thank you for each and every person in the sound of my voice. 
Father, I thank you for what you're showing them, oh God. Uh, Lord, I know we don't have any rights to this music, but Father, I thank you for the blessing with it to uh, be able to speak to the people, Lord God, to give them encouragement, to give them wisdom, to give them understanding, Lord. God, the things may be going on in their life, Lord. I pray that this message that be a blessing to each and every person that understand my voice, they hear this message from God. Well, I thank you how you strengthen me. If there's anyone out there who have not received the Lord, you, you stumble across this message. You just pray this one prayer this way. Say, Lord Jesus, come into my life and save me. I'm a sinner. And Lord Jesus, I need you. I know you died for my sins. And you rose again on the third day. And you sit at the right hand of the Father to intercede on my behalf. And Lord, I thank you that today I am in your hands. I'm in your presence. And I have eternal life from this moment on in Jesus' name. Just something simple like that. I pray, I pray it every, a lot of time myself. Lord, have mercy on me, Lord. I know you died for my sins. Because I don't get it right all the time. I have attitudes sometimes. But this, but this message has been a blessing to you. You know, leave me, leave me a comment. You know, tell me really just what you think think of this message. I really would love to hear from you. I've got a lot of encouragement from a lot of you. And thank you, please. I thank you. I thank you. I thank you for all your words of encouragement and what you have put put in the comments and everything. Uh, still, some changes are coming up. As you see, uh, my logo has changed a little bit. Changes are starting to come about. We're going to have a website coming up soon too, as well. But uh, until until uh, Tuesday. Tuesday morning, 9.30 Eastern Standard Time. Uh, I pray your strength in the Lord. Uh, until we meet at that time, Lord willing, we'll be here and look to still speak about eternity past, eternity future, as well as eternity present right now. Amen. God bless you in Jesus' name.